Hi there, it's V from Crafting Daily Dose. Today we are going to be making a pop-up card with a panel on the inside that floats. So I thought that was the perfect way to showcase these beautiful dragonflies. We're going to start with some old olive cardstock. And instead of cutting it in the usual way, we're going to turn it so that the short side is at the top. And we are going to cut it to be five and a half inches wide. Next, we're going to turn it over so that the long side is at the top. And we are going to cut this to be four and seven eighths. And we're going to actually cut two of those. So two that are four and seven eighths. I'm going to move that cutting blade out of the way because now I need to score each of these pieces that we just cut. We're going to score them at four and one quarter. I'll bring my other piece that I had used back in and score that at four and one quarter as well. Now I'm going to bring in my Paper Blooms Designer Series paper, which is one of the papers that's available for free during celebration. I'm going to cut it into a strip that is five and one quarter inches. Let's get that cut. And then using that piece, I'm going to cut at four and one eighth. And I'm going to do that twice, right in a row. So two pieces that are four and one eighth inch. I need to bring back the remainder of my DSP and I'm going to cut another width that is five and a quarter. and turn it the other way. And this time, I'm only going to do four inches. Now for the dragonflies on this card, you can certainly use the stamped images from the Dragonfly Garden stamp set, but I'm gonna be using a little bit of a shortcut. I'm bringing in the Dandy Garden Designer Series paper because it's got all those beautiful dragonflies already. And it coordinates with the punch. So you can use the punch to um, get the images out. Now, if you'll notice, there are some medium-sized dragonflies like this yellow one, this orange one, the purple one. Um, those are the same size as this other hole on the punch, but when you line up the large dragonflies, the medium-sized ones are not going to line up perfectly, and I don't want to waste those images. So what I'm going to do first is to do a rough cut of um, the image that I want, and then I'm going to separately rough cut this out so that I can um, use the punch on that as well. So what I can now do is take this and put it onto uh, just a little post-it and then use the post-it as like a handle to be able to put this paper into my punch. I have to adjust that a little bit. Line it up. And there I've got my perfect dragonfly. Now I can do the same thing with one of these medium images here. Put 
that onto a post-it. And line that up. And punch that out as well. I'm just going to repeat that same process to get all of the ones that I want. I'm going to bring back the card bases so we can start assembling. And I've folded them along the score lines as mountain folds, though really you could do it either way. I'm just going to take a bone folder to reinforce those folds. I'm going to turn them so that these little flaps are up at the top here. Now remember we had cut out three pieces of the design and series paper. One of them is just a little bit shorter than the other, so set that one aside. We want the two that are four and one eighth inch in this direction, and we want to figure out which way that they had gone. Okay, I can see that they were originally cut like this, so I'm going to put it this way so that the pattern looks like it's continuous across the papers. Now the reason why these are a little bit longer than the other is that uh, when I'm doing these interior pieces, if I have enough paper to do it, I prefer to not have a gap here in the middle, um, but leave a margin along the sides. And if I were to use the shorter piece, there'd be that gap, and I just prefer it this way. But if I am short on paper, um, then I would certainly be willing to cut these down to four inches instead, instead of four and one eighth. Okay, so all I'm going to do is take my stamp and seal and put these on, and I'm going to push the designer series paper all the way to this fold, leaving a gap around the other three edges. Once I've put the DSP on, I'm going to take some tear on tape and put it along these edges. So the way this is going to work is that these two edges are going to come together and we're going to sandwich in some window strips in between and that's what's going to make our floating panel. So I'm going to put this on here and I want to get as close as I can right to that crease line. I'm using spare scissors here so that my good snips don't get gummed up. So I'm going to put one layer here right by the crease line and then I want to put a layer right by the top edge. The reason that we cut these measurements the way that they that we did is so that um, we could put two strips of tear and tape here without any overhang that we would have to uh, trim off. And I'm going to do that on both sides. You can, of course, tear the tear and tape, but when I'm doing pop-ups or interactive cards, I really prefer to cut it just so that um, I can be more precise with where my adhesive is. We're going to focus on one of these card base panels and I'm going to bring in window sheet strips. I have three of them. They're each one half inch in width and four inches in length. We won't need that whole length, but it's better to start out with more than what you need and trim it down rather than have a piece that is too short. So what I'm doing here is I'm just laying out my window pieces and I'm going to start figuring out where I want to place my dragonflies. What's important here is that I want to make sure that everything is going to fit within the card so I can 
uh, move things and rearrange things as needed in order to make that happen. I also want to make sure that my dragonflies don't overlap with one another so that the when the card opens and closes they won't do this thing because then that may create a catch point that's going to interfere with the smooth opening of your card. Let's put another one down here. And then maybe one over here. Okay, when I'm happy with the placement of those, I'm going to use some mini glue dots. These are left over some, from some paper pumpkins. And uh, I'm gonna use the mini glue dots to adhere the dragonflies to the window sheet. As I'm placing my dragonflies, I'm not only checking to make sure that they fit within the boundaries of the card, but also that when I flip this flap over, that nothing gets covered by it. So I'm pretty happy with where that is. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my window strips and cut them down. Just trim off the parts that extend beyond the dragonfly so it will be a little bit more tidy. All right, now, when you look at these window strips on the back, you can see the little glue dots that are there and it doesn't look quite as neat. So what I want to do is I want to cover the back side. The one option that you have is to go ahead and punch out another dragonfly and put it on the back. That would be really pretty. Uh, if you're trying to conserve paper and conserve these images though, you can just choose another DSP on the back. I'm just going to use one of the other papers that's in the designer pack and I'm going to choose yellow for mine, but really any of these would work. I do recommend though that you'd use DSP and not cardstock um, on the back because if you use the cardstock, you're going to have one side that's a little bit heavier than the other if you put cardstock on this way and um, it's going to tend to tilt a little bit back towards the heavier side. So I'm just going to punch these out. Once I have everything punched out, I'm going to use some glue to adhere it to the back side. For the other ones, there was plenty of paper touching on both sides, um, but for this last little one, there's not going to be very much surface area for the two pieces of paper to adhere to one another. So I'm just going to reinforce everything with a glue dot. Since the window sheet is a non-porous surface. Okay. I'm going to double check my placement. Turn everything back over. Now I'm going to take off the backing from the tear and tape. I'm going to do both strips. Then I'm going to gently just press down a little bit and place my window sheet in pretty much the same position that I had it before, except now I'm going to place that window sheet strip onto the adhesive here. I'm going to do this next one. 
pressing down, keeping it in pretty much the same position. And then one last one on the end. Once I'm happy with that, I'm going to bring my other piece in and I've removed the backing from it as well. And now I'm going to align these together. I'm going to do it this way. So it's easier for me to see. And I'm basically using the edge of my fingers to make sure that they line up nicely. I'm just going to do one section at a time and kind of march my way down. And there you have it. Now when you open up the card, your panel comes up and the dragonflies are floating around. So that's basically all there is to constructing this type of pop-up. Now I'm just going to briefly mention what I did to decorate the rest of the card. For the front, we're using that last piece of DSP that had been cut, the one that is four inches in height, and it's going to get centered on the front panel. These shaped panels come from the stitched nested labels dies. The largest one is used to cut out a piece from Bumblebee cardstock, and the second to largest one is used to cut out a piece from Seafoam Green. The stamping is done with the Dragonfly Garden stamp set. And then these additional die cuts come from Forever Flourishing in Mossy Meadow and Pear Pizzazz. This dragonfly that is on the front is punched out from that same designer series paper. And before gluing it down to the front of the card, I just use my fingers to gently curl up the edges of the wing. And then there's only glue on the middle part of the body so that when you glue it down, the wings still furl up and give a little bit of extra dimension. On the inside, we're using the same stitch nested labels dies to create these panels. And then there's one last dragonfly that's glued on. I hope that you'll have a chance to try this pop-up. It's a lot of fun to make and there are many different ways that it can be used. I hope that you've enjoyed this dose of creativity and that you'll join me the next time. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great day.